I don't know whether it was deliberate, but I, I, I've been handed the um, condition that is most likely to make me start getting quite upset on air, and I can't say the words either. <laughs> Epider epidermolysis bullosa is known as the worst condition you've never heard of. It's a, it's a group of rare genetic disorders that result in the fragility of the skin. When I use words like blisters and wounds and sores, um, they're just words to you. But the three people in the studio with me, um, it's your life. Nick and Jenna are here with their, with their little boy, Freddie. And you live with this, Nick, every single day. We do, yeah. And a couple of years ago, we were like most people, we hadn't ever heard of the, heard of the condition. And then at 11.20 on a Friday morning, things dramatically changed. What happened? Um, everything was going well and the, the labour and everything was great. And, and Freddie came along at 20 past 11 and, and very quickly I noticed that Freddie was born with no no skin on his hands and feet. Okay. Um, on his left hand, the, the telltale sign for me was that he had a strip of um, skin, well, what turned out to be skin, a yellow strip through his left hand where he'd been inside the womb, he'd been rubbing his hand and the skin had exploded and, and ended up in a just a strip along his hand. Um, I'm just going to mention to people listening that I, I'm, I'm walking a tightrope here between listening, <laughs> listening respectfully and very poignantly to, to mum and dad. While Freddie is attempting, I think, to do origami with the microphone at the moment, so I'm also going to be pulling faces at Freddie and trying to get him to laugh. You say morning. While trying to hold myself together as Nick and Jenna continue to tell their story, you do what you want with the microphone, Freddie. Seriously, it's, it's only me that will get into trouble. <laughs> it's only me that will get into trouble if it gets ruined. So you knew something wasn't right. Yeah, straight away. I've, Jenna I've, was still I've a little bit preoccupied. Yeah, completely. I didn't, I didn't have a clue <laughs> at all. Even when he was placed on your chest, when he, there wasn't oh. a, an awareness. And obviously, that I'd seen the shock and trail away. And as soon as the the nurse, that had, his delivery nurse, had, had been given him, uh, but, but pulled him out, you could see the sort of panic in her face because she knew that something was wrong. And then, sort of within five minutes, I'd he was in yeah. in an incubator, and I was I was wheeling him into special care, which is not straight away not what anyone expects. You, really, tell, you so. tell the story quite. I guess you have to. It's just matter of fact for you. Yeah. It is. It is, it is it is, it is just life. When did you realise that this wasn't something that was going to be fixed or, 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 uh, or, or cured in about, hospital? About 8 o'clock that evening. Well, the doctor came to talk to you, Jenna. Yeah, or? we had uh, Great Ormond Street Aww. come down. It was a specialist EB clinic nurses. Um, and it was quite light and sort of the conversation wasn't too hard or, you know, it was depressing. And then we got taken into the room and it was literally, right, your child might not live past neonatal stage. Oh, man. And that to we us. were actually sorry to interrupt. We were actually very fortunate that our paediatrician at our local hospital at Watford General was um, had seen the condition that Freddie had. Well, ended up having just once before, so he okay. knew to call Great Ormond Street. Straight away. Otherwise, we could have been in for a, a few days or before even weeks. We could have been on. in. Yeah, we could have been going around in circles and, and doing all the wrong things. So we were very very fortunate in the in the grand scheme of things that we knew very soon what was going on. Is Freddie your first? Second. Second. So the seven year old little girl. So seven year old little girl at home. So Who's you, that you, you should friend? have been taking him home with streamers yeah. and balloons and instead yeah. you are taking him home with confusion and fear, Jenna. We didn't even take him home. We no. um stayed in the special care unit for ten days in a, a room not very big a at third, all. A third of the size of your yeah. studio. <laughs> Particularly big um, studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> should I, should I? yeah, so it wasn't there was no congratulations. I didn't want to speak to anybody. My mum my daughter had to move in with my mum. <laughs> Um, it was just our whole world. It was like we were mourning for the child that we were expecting. So how, how was it explained to you? What, um, what are you being involved? It was ex explained very frank to us. Okay. It was to the point, this is what could be, this is what could happen to your child. Your child may not live, or your child could live, but will be in pain for most of his life. Um, that was the main borderline, what we were told. And then it sort of progressed into what types, what subtypes because there's many forms of types of EB and subtypes of EB. Um, that was a fear as well, wasn't so it? Because we were, we were unknown, yeah. exactly. We had to wait for a biopsy, which was done on the, on the Monday, and the, the, um, a piece of well, a specimen of skin was sent away for, for analysis and stuff before we actually knew what was, what was going on. So that was, not only did we have to deal with the current, but we also had to deal with the, the wait and each day going past before we knew what was generally going to, so what, what is, could happen. What is the, the sort of... So Freddie's type is EB simplex, severe, um, which basically means that it's the top layer of skin that mainly gets affected. It's not the worst type, right. but it's the worst type of his type, as in simplex. Um, he blisters usually in clusters. And what um, would cause a blister? Anything. Um, 
his clothes, his dummies, um, if I wiped his face that could cause a blister. Um, people see like the bumps on his face and things and, and the marks and yeah. they assume it's sort of eczema or something like that but they're, they're literally know. just marks from where he's fallen and instead of bumping his head the skin comes straight off oh. so he has to wear his clothes inside out um, sort of like the main level that touches his skin has to be inside out <laughs> yes <laughs> yes you can see he's very happy though I know you can say that again mm -hmm. how much so um, he, he's in pain a lot of the time um, yeah we have to administer morphine to do dressing changes and he's on para paracetamol throughout the day and how often do you change his dressings because he's um, wearing a sort of surgical yeah at the moment he does a dressing change in the morning it can last from about 30 minutes to 2 hours depending okay. on how severe he is um, his arms and legs are mainly sort of prevention this sort of protection you can see here and his main area is usually his back yes and and his um bottom area oh, his worst area up. generally is around his is sort of what i would call the contact yeah. area so yeah. from sort of halfway up his thighs to halfway down his waist yes. because of where that's always in contact he's got dressings he's, he's basically bending. got his nappy and then a liner and the liner holds dressings in place right so it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's a full time. Oh, oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, mum's so got no. What does the future look like, Nick? Um, day by day, generally. We can't. We can't it's a difficult one, yeah. We can't. We it don't. might sound quite morbid, but we have to live day by day because they can each day is so different. Yes. The simplest of tasks are generally the hardest, like sitting in the car. The fear of sitting in the car for too long, his back getting sweaty, which then rubs, causes blisters, and all the simple things that people. I don't mean like, the, the stuff that people take for granted. Yes, of course. Um, well, you can say that because you used yeah. to. You used yeah, exactly. To yeah, for exactly. Granted, yeah. As, as, as children for ourselves, and there's the little the little girl Simon and stuff like that as well. So it's. Yeah, all the stuff that you just did normally, you have to, you have to completely, we almost have to adapt to everything, and yeah, seeing other, seeing other children as well, isn't it? Of, it's almost it's it's hard. It's yeah. difficult. That's yeah. The thing. I mean, you can't people, get past that. Yeah, yeah. When people say to us, "Oh, is he in pain? Does it hurt?" And I have to try and say to them, "Well, have you ever had a blister on your foot?" Yeah. You know, try and imagine that all over your body. Always. And that's the only way we can sort and of describe it. Close, and we, really, we regret, we hate stress. getting our own blisters because it just makes it so real of how Freddie feels yeah, every single day. It's, it's very hard. Let's talk about Deborah. Deborah is one of the charities that we're supporting today, and I, I suppose it's fair to describe them as having supported you. Yeah. What do they do? What was that? Amazing. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> from from day one, our our support worker at Deborah's, who's part of the community support team, is is absolutely unbelievable. We'd be we'd have been in in many simple situations for most people. Um, on top of everything daily, to, it would make things an awful lot different. We know that there's a phone call. There's always a phone call there, whether it be seven o'clock in the morning nine o'clock at night there's always that's there's always somebody immense, there to, yeah there's that's always immense. someone there to talk I mean, to and the support and we had a complication with when we moved house we didn't have any carpet or any flooring or anything like that and we knew that that's a major thing for freddie when he started crawling so they helped us out with a beautiful soft carpet so he wouldn't sort of get too sore whilst trying to crawl just at the stage of starting to crawl and as well wasn't it so. within a phone call she's there within uh, she's, uh, she doesn't live far from us so she's there within an hour or so and, and, she, and, and this is true of all families who are dealing with EB they'll help yeah without support. without the support dead, you'd be support. you'd be totally lost, lost. Yeah. how have people you know coped I, I mean if because I'm going to choose my words carefully but it could I mean some people could be quite intimidated by it or freaked out um, yeah. yeah we've had a lot of comments we've had a lot of sort of suggestions on how to look after him and what oh, to do great. thanks for that yeah, yeah. 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 Have, you yeah. have you tried oh, yeah. 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 Oh, we, oh, we hear that one a lot we had one, we had lady, in the nicest possible we had a lady on the train this morning have you tried oh have you tried going dairy free yeah for, yeah yeah unfortunately it's not ex it's, I mean, we it's kind, not of, we've kind of learned how to just sort of shrug it off and just nod politely and just accept what people have to say and we prefer to teach them yeah. on, we prefer on, people to ask yeah. we? we prefer people to ask and stare and point and, yes. and make their own make their own judgments on on what what they believe it is and, um, and, which and is and difficult it. at times because as you can see there <laughs> for his he's face he's got the odd mark but yeah. we've had times where all around his nose his mouth and everything's absolutely covered in scabs and right. at that point people think we've had people say to us well, what have you done to your child yeah. and you, yeah. at that point when you're dealing with everything else that you we, just want to lose, try not to lose it we, well I bet you do and I should, I should add makes a big lad we don't want you losing it really. <laughs> <laughs> but of course what Deborah provides you with is somebody to whom you don't need to explain anything or account for anything probably the only Real place you can friends. turn to where they she, they're, they're, yeah. as, they're as across it and as understanding as you have yeah. to be she is, she is my real friend with extra added bits to it oh. I can speak to her I can cry down the phone to her I can scream 
scream, anything, and she understands, and she's just brilliant. No matter what I've got to say to her, whether it's a housing issue or anything, she will help no matter what. So yeah, it's lovely. Well, if she can't help, she'll do her yeah. absolute best to find yeah. someone who, someone who can. Put, put you in the right direction. Yeah. I don't think we could really do more to stress the importance of the work that Deborah does, could we? Is there anything no. you guys want to add that I haven't haven't given you an opportunity to say so far? Um, hi. No, we've got it all covered. But yeah. Freddie, do you want to see? Do you, Freddie, do you, do you want to see my new puppy? Do you want to see my new puppy, Freddie? Can you say should hi? we should we do the travel news and then I'll show you I'll show you the pictures. Of, hello, I'll show you the pictures of my new puppy while we do. No, give it back, Dad. Sorry, give it back, Dad. I'm going to tell you right now how you can uh, make a donation to Global's Make Some Noise. If you want to donate five pounds or ten pounds, just text LBC five. That's LBC F I V E or LBC ten LBC T E N. No spaces, no numbers. Text that to seven double o seven o. Hundred percent of your donation will go to Global's Make Some Noise. If you're under 16, do get the bill payers' permission first, and remember that the Vodafone Foundation will match all donations up to £100,000. For all the terms and conditions, go to makesomenoise.com. Uh, Nick and Jenna, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having base. us. Thanks. We're proud to be supporting Global's Make Some Noise, LBC's charity to give a voice to small projects and helping to change the lives of disadvantaged children and young people in London and throughout the UK. One of the smaller charities we're supporting is Teens Unite and two teens that teens...